How bad is the base 8 gigabyte M3 MacBook Air and is it worth spending the extra money to upgrade to 16 gigabytes? Well, today I will show you guys the difference. I'm gonna start out with restarting both of these machines to make sure we have nice fresh systems to work with. Right out of the gate, I wanna look at the activity monitor and here the 8 gig is using 5.41 gigs of memory just to run the base Mac OS with the background applications. And that means that we only have a few more gigs left until we have to start writing a RAM to the SSD. Now, thankfully, when we opened up the M3 MacBook Air, we saw that it finally has two NAND chips for storage. And that also means it's a lot quicker writing your RAM files to the SSD compared to the M2 models that only had one. And interestingly, our 16 gig model is using almost eight gigs just to run Mac OS meaning this one is kind of limiting itself. Now, before I get into multitasking, I'm gonna start with a few baseline tests to show you guys what the regular performance is until we make it a little tougher, more of the way people use the machines. As you guys can see, the regular benchmark numbers are practically identical. And running this web browser test here, we end up getting pretty much identical scores. So if you have nothing running in the background and you're doing basic tasks, tasks, you won't notice the difference. Now, most people don't just run one application or one browser tab at a time, so it's benchmarks like these that can be misleading. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up just five web browsing tabs, some basics like email, Google Drive, couple web pages, and a YouTube video, which I often listen to in the background. And now with that open, it is surprising to see that the 8 gig model still has no swap being used, but it does show more more memory pressure than the 16 gig. And now let's do some graphics based tasks. I have Blender opened up right here. Let's go ahead and render this scene. And both of these machines have the same 10 core graphics with the M3 chip. The first run always takes a little bit longer because it has to load up the kernels and optimize them. But as you guys can see, the GPUs are maxed out on both of these. I can already see that the 16 gig model is ahead of the 8 gig and it used only 74 megabytes of SSD swap compared to four and a half gigs. So that's another thing that you need to know. Just because you spend extra money on 16 gigs doesn't mean that Mac OS won't use your SSD for extra RAM. Our 8 gig model took two minutes and 57 seconds compared to two minutes and 37 seconds on the 16 gig, so that's already a 13% difference with almost nothing opened up in the background. To be honest, I was not expecting this. I thought they would be identical because with the M1 MacBook Air and for the most part with the M2, a test like this wouldn't be much of a difference. But as Apple's gotten faster, especially with their new M3 lineup of chips, they have higher performance, so they need more RAM. But Apple has kept the base eight gigs when in my opinion, it should start with at least 12. Of course, not everybody does things like these, so I'm gonna close this program down. And the next thing I wanna test is some photo editing. This is Lightroom Classic, and I have 50 raw images that are edited here. Now, I would not expect us to have any differences as we're swapping photos. And you know what? The 16 gig is actually faster. So we are seeing a little bit of a difference. Let's go ahead and just zoom into the section. Pretty smooth on both. Now, one interesting difference you have to know about is that the 8 gig model in the preferences, it says it supports limited acceleration compared to the 16, which automatically supports full acceleration because they know that 16 gigs of RAM is enough since that memory is shared both by the CPU and the graphics. Now, thankfully, we can actually go in here and go to custom and select use GPU for export and that enables it. But let's go ahead and export 50 of these images and see the difference. And as this is happening, we're using 3.3 gigs of swap on the 8 gig and 1.16 on the 16th. So it still needs that, but I'm noticing that it's going a lot quicker on the 16 than the 8 gig model. 
because overall we're using more graphics performance. Sometimes this has to limit the graphics performance because it doesn't have enough memory to keep up. The 16 gig took a minute and 11 seconds compared to a minute and 46, almost a minute 47 on the eight gig. That is a 50% difference in performance and all we have is five web browsing tabs open in the background. I don't know about you guys, but oftentimes I have 20 at a minimum, 30. Right now I might have about 45 or so on my MacBook Pro. I also prefer to use Google Chrome and thankfully the newest versions are a lot better optimized, very close to Safari. So I'm gonna keep the five tabs still open in Safari and open up just 15 more for a total of 20. I won't go to 30, 40, or 50. And I opened up a variety of tabs, some regular websites. I have some documents, a spreadsheet open, and a couple other regular websites, a Google search. And now let's go back into Lightroom and I'm gonna try that export one more time. And this time I'm noticing that even our CPU on the eight gig is being used less than the 16 gig, which is at like 87%. So we're not using all the capabilities of the M3 because of the lower RAM. Wow, guys, okay, the 16 gig finished a minute and 11 seconds, identical to last time. It really did not care that we have 20 web browsing tabs open. Bam, the eight gig is done. Look at this. Two minutes and 43 seconds. Just as a reminder, this is the difference when we only had five tabs open and now is taking more than twice as long. And the only difference is that we have eight gigs versus 16 and it's a $200 upgrade for that. That's literally giving you more than double the performance. And that is not the only difference. I'm gonna run this one more time and I don't know about you guys, but when I'm doing something, I have to wait on a program. I go and I use my computer. I check my emails, things like that. So let's go ahead and go back into Chrome here. You guys saw the difference that this thing opened instantly compared to having a delay. Let's go ahead and open up, say this browsing tab right here. Switch over. You guys can see that the eight gig is taking longer. It's having to reload all of that from its SSD. Man, that is a noticeable difference right there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at that. I don't know about you guys, but if I just spent a ton of money on a brand new machine, I would want it to be run snappy, even if I have something happening in the background. Look at that glitching up right there. And look at this, this one is almost done. It doesn't seem like that slowed it down at all. Let's open up Safari right here. I clicked at the same time. You guys saw that right there. That video had to literally pause in the background compared to run. And it looks like Lightroom is done. That took the same amount of time. It was just two seconds longer than when I wasn't multitasking. And here, let's see. Oh my goodness. We've barely got anywhere on here. Our usage is lower. And let's go ahead and flick through here. Everything's having to be reloaded. Okay, we're still waiting. Still waiting. Man. I can't believe how long that is taking there. And we're also just getting stuttering, stuff like that. Let's open this back up. Guys, it has been five minutes and we are not even halfway done here. This is worse than I thought, to be completely honest. I'm gonna run this one more time here. And based off of this, this computer could lap this one about five times if you're trying to multitask. And what I wanna test here is the web browsing performance while we're multitasking. Now here, our CPU and GPU are not being used very much. Here, they're almost maxed out, 98%, 82%, because we have that render going on in the background just like we are on the eight gig. And now as you guys could see, we're seeing a difference even in this benchmark, but the real difference comes in when you click and stuff just takes forever to load and go through. Man. 
Come on, you could do this. <laughs> All right, guys, it's almost finally done here. Um, there you go. And that took 12 minutes and 36 seconds compared to a minute 13 doing the same exact stuff. And I actually ran that three times on the system while that was running to make sure I'm, you know, when I'm testing stuff in the background, it is fair. So that just shows you guys what kind of a difference having 16 gigs of RAM and extra 200 bucks can make. Now I was actually going to push the system even further for photo editing and those kind of tasks. You guys see the difference there, but I don't think I need to to show you guys that, or maybe I'll run one video editing test. The M3 has ProRes decoders and encoders, and that makes it a great machine to do some editing with. And now let's go ahead and export the same exact, just five minute project. All right, that is done. We have two minutes and four seconds compared to a minute and 42. So not as big of a difference as in Lightroom, but of course this time around, we also weren't trying to multitask and use our computer. I think that shows us a good lesson. If you are somebody that has barely anything open, maybe a few web browsing tabs, and if you use an application, you're doing simple work, one application at a time, and then if something has to be processing, you sit there and wait or walk away. An 8 gig model might work well for you for basic tasks, but if you like to multitask and you have different things open, you're researching, um, you're going back and forth uh, with different tasks, let alone if I'd be you know, exporting a video and then I'd go into Photoshop, for example, to process an image, that is when the machine can slow down or even trying to go to the web browser as you guys saw. And I will say for most people that are watching this channel, you should spend the extra $200. You already are spending a good amount for a laptop and these are great machines, but as the processors got faster, especially now with the M3 chip, not having enough RAM really bottlenecks the system for multitasking or tougher tasks. So I really wish Apple shipped this at least with 12 gigs, but 16 gigs as a base, that is what we should have in 2024. But of course they want you to spend that extra $200. And unfortunately I do think it is well worth it. And that right there is the truth that you have to know. And I push my systems harder than this. And I know a lot of you guys that have commented on previous videos, you do as well. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there, this Max, and I'll see you in the next one.